uh, M2. The TCP, IP, and Ethernet headers in this way uh, are uh, created only, only one. And uh, this, provide, this provides an advantage because the computational cost is almost independent of the payload length, but depends strongly of the number of uh, crosses. Instead, on the, on the right, uh, we can see the behavior when the TSO is not present. In this case, the TCP uh, layer segments the data and each packet must cross all levels of the network stack. The TSO helps the sender. Instead, the RSC, receive side coalescing or hardware LRO, uh, helps the receiver. The RSC allows uh, an ink to combine in hardware uh, incoming TCP IP packets from the same connection into one large uh, receive segment before passing it on operating system. It reduces CPU use because the TCP IP stack is uh, uh, executed only, one for, only once for a set of received Ethernet frames. Basically, the RSC is the dual of uh, the TSO. This diagram shows on the left the RSC, how RSC works. The RSC allows the aggregation, uh, in the, uh, then it's passed to the operating system. In this way, only the aggregate system will cross the network stack. Okay, why do we need a software implementation? There are several reasons. For example, if we have an old NIC that supports only EP version 4, the hardware upgrade is really difficult. Or if the card has a more function in the floating system, it cannot be used. Or if we don't have the hardware in the communication, for example, between uh, virtual machines, we need a software mechanism to do a segmentation. In all these cases, the, um, it's, it's useful to have a software solution to allow us to obtain the same benefit. Finally, the software is easier to extend than hardware to support new protocol or to fix the bugs. Okay, since uh, FreeBSD 7.1, we have a software implementation of RSC called LRO, Layer Receive of Fluid. Uh, this software mechanism that requires to change every, uh, each device driver allows to obtain the same advantage of the RSC. On the left, there is RSC, uh, hardware RSC, and on the right, there is a software LRO. In the device driver, in the same interrupt context, the packets from the same connection are uh, aggregated into one uh, single, in one segment, and then uh, it's passed to the operating system, uh, to the network stack. At this point, the behavior is the same to the LRO. There is only one big segment that cross the stack. Now I will introduce a software mechanism that we have uh, developed for the sender side. It's called a GSO, Generic Segmentation of Fluid, uh, basically, it's the software implementation of the TSO, but it supports not only TCP, but also UDP on uh, AP version 4 and version 6. The GSO is available for FreeBSD current, 10 stable, and 9 stable. Uh, to avoid changing every device driver, we had the segmentation just before the device driver. We can see it in, in the next slide. On the left, there is a, a GSO scheme the diagram. And on the right, there is uh, with, uh, without GSO support. Much of the advantage of uh, the hardware TSO comes from crossing the network stack only once. The GSO do does the same by uh, doing uh, the segmentation in software as late as possible. Ideally, this could be done within uh, the, the device driver, but uh, that would require modification of all drivers. A more convenient, similar, effective approach is to do the segmentation in, uh, just before uh, the packet is passed to the driver. <coughs> uh, this diagram shows uh, an example of uh, TCP's uh, data flow. Uh, our modification to add the GSO support are referred to the network stack. In particular, we changed TCP output, IP output, ether output, and uh, we added a GSO dispatch function to do the segmentation just before the driver. <coughs> uh, TCP output, uh, um, oh, sorry for, TCP output checks if uh, GSO is enabled. Mm, there is some CCTL uh, to enable the GSO or to change the, some parameters that uh, we will discuss later. And after that, checks if the packet length exceeds the MTU. 
in this case, uh, um, our set, uh, um, TCP output set GSO flag in the mbuff packet teaser field called csum, uh, csum flag. Uh, we used four bit in, um, in this field, uh, both to indicate that GSO is uh, required and uh, to specify the type of segmentation. In this way, uh, GSO dispatch will avoid to inspect the header uh, to understand the type of, com uh, of segmentation. Then the packet is passed to EP IP output. If GSO is um, enabled and required, uh, EP output avoids to, to calculate the checksum, both TCP and uh, IP, because they will be calculated for seg uh, after segmentation on each new packet. And it avoids to do uh, EP fragmentation. At last, uh, ether output, after building the, um, the, ether ad, uh, the Ethernet header, uh, if GSO is required, call GSO dispatch instead of if transmitted. <clears throat> in uh, GSO dispatch, using the information contained in uh, the CSAM flag field, the uh, appropriate function is invoked to perform the segmentation. We use a, a simple uh, array of function uh, to, to do this. Uh, in, for example, in the case of uh, TCP on uh, IP version 4, the function uh, is uh, GSO underscore IP4 underscore TCP. Uh, this function, similar to the others, for example, to uh, UDP or uh, TCP on uh, IP version 6, performs three main uh, operations. Co uh, one calls the uh, MSEG function. Uh, this function uh, returns the uh, MBUF queue that contains the new segment. After that, number two, fix the TCP and IP headers in each new segment because uh, then uh, these headers are simply copied from original packet into uh, a new segment. And then send new segments to the device driver. Uh, these are uh, G uh, MSEG function. Uh, this is the MSEG function. Uh, in, uh, from the original packet uh, to mbuff. In, uh, in the mseg function, uh, there is some parameter. The m0 is the original packet. Header lan is the lan, the first uh, byte in the m0 that are copied in new segment, in each new segment. And uh, mss is the maximum segment size. After the segmentation, we need to fix the TCP IP header. In this case, uh, TCP on IP version 4. Um, the, red, the red fields are to, uh, must be changed. In more detail, uh, in, for EP, um, EP header, total LAN will contain the new packet sites. Identification will be uh, increased. And we'll, uh, be, uh, we'll recalculate the checksum of the, of the EP header. For the TCP header, the sequence number will refer the data contained in the, in the segment. Uh, some flags um, are only set in the first uh, segment, for example, CV, CWR, and other flags only in the last segment, push and pin. And uh, we will uh, recalculate the TCP uh, checksum if the hardware is not capable. For TCP on EP version 6, the um, changes in the TCP header is the same. Uh, in the EP uh, header, there is only payload length to, that contains the, the length of this segment. <clears throat> As we say, the GSO also supports UDP traffic. In this case, we need to perform EP fragmentation, but we delayed this just before to call the device driver as we can see in the, uh, in the diagram on the left. Uh, on the right, if GSO is not enabled, the fragmentation is done in uh, EP level, and each fragment must cross Ethernet, uh, Ethernet uh, level that adds the same header to all fragments. Okay, uh, the steps that are performed um, with EP, fragment, EP fragmentation are the same that we've already uh, describe, MSEG, fix the header, and send the packet. The only difference is the EP header changes, uh, because in this case, uh, we must do um, um, EP fragmentation, 
and uh, uh, modify the appropriate fields like uh, fragment offset and uh, more field and, uh, and we calculate the either checksum. <clears throat> For EP version six to do EP fragmentation, uh, EP fragmentation, we need to add an additional uh, header, fragmentation header in, in red uh, that contains the fragment information. Okay, to manage the uh, GSO parameter, we add some uh, sys, uh, CTL. There are two sys CTL to uh, disable, enable GSO, or uh, TCP or UDP communication. Um, for example, nat.inat.tcp.gso, um, enable or disable the GSO on all TCP communication. And uh, there is other two for each interface to limit the GSO bars and to disable, enable GSO on individual interfaces. <coughs> Our code is available in, uh, two, uh, in uh, these uh, two repositories. The first uh, uh, contains the pages, utilities, and uh, Pico BSD images and a brief description of GSO. And the second one contains the free BSD source code with GSO support. To compile the kernel with GSO support, you uh, just need to add option GSO in kernel config. In, uh, in this slide, we, we can see the changes to add GSO support in uh, free BSD current. We added two files, gso.c and gso.h in sysnet and uh, a little, uh, a very small piece of code in, uh, in the network stack files, like EP, TCP, and UDP. Okay, at the end, I show you the results that we have obtained in, uh, in the experiments. This, our, this is uh, our testing environment. We used NetPerf as a benchmark tool and the 10 gigabit links between uh, the machines. To see the effect of GSO or TSO, the receiver must have LRO uh, software or hardware enabled. <coughs> in, uh, in this slide, we see the result with TCP EP4 traffic. On the horizontal, horizontal axis, we have the CPU frequency. On the vertical uh, axis, we have the um, throughput. Uh, the red curve is obtained with the hardware TSO. The blue curve is obtained with GSO uh, software and with the red, uh, the red um, curve is without any, any segmentation of loading. We perform an experiment by scaling the frequency of the CPU because uh, as you can see from the graph, uh, we, uh, at high frequency, the 10 gigabit links becomes the bottleneck. From the graph, we can see at two gigahertz, uh, uh, the GSO uh, saturates the link and from the table at one giga and a half, um, uh, the GSO is almost twice fast without offloading. <clears throat> in, this, in this other slide, we can see the results with TCP on uh, EP version 6. Uh, there is the same uh, TSO on uh, the red curve is TSO, blue curve is uh, GSO, and green curve is uh, without segmentation. Also, in this case, uh, GSO uh, allow us to have a double throughput compared with um, without offloading. <clears throat> with uh, UDP traffic, uh, we have a speed up about 20%. This is because the GSO in, in this case only prevents the crossing of uh, heater output. Uh, UDP output and uh, IP output are crossed only once both GSO and uh, non, uh, uh, both GSO is enabled or not. Uh, for DP on EP version six uh, is the same. Okay, future works. We'll try to do to do more performance measurements. For example, by using a multiple concurrent stream, we'll try to optimize uh, critical path and add support to new new protocol. For example, as CTP. <coughs> Thank you. <laughs> do you have? Um, <coughs> Do you have any question? Is it possible to make the GSO option um, enabling by default um, automatic? I mean, so if um, 
Depending on whether um, segmentation of loading is supported by the hardware or not, to make it the, um, the to to have it enabled automatically or not enabled. Or if the hardware, if the NIC have a TSO, uh, the network stack uh, uh, use the hardware TSO. Or if you disable the TSO for, with the config, for example, the, in, and enable the GSO with the CCTL. No, I mean, can you make it so that the system um, selects whether to enable GSO or not, depending on the hardware support of uh, segmentation of loading? Oh, uh, yes, if you, if you enable GSO, for example, in this way, also, both in the NIC and in the stack, if the, uh, if the NIC uh, didn't have the, the, the TSO, it's automatic. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, have you tested this feature together with packet filters, uh, PF, or something uh, to, to see how networks, uh, networks address translation? Uh, no, we didn't test. Uh, hello. Uh, question is, uh, how much extra load does, uh, does it add to the CPU? Uh, we didn't uh, have uh, the, this result, and, but the, low, the, the load of the CPU is not very high. Uh, we, we think it's not very high. Uh, but uh, you said uh, currently it's uh, single-threaded? Yeah. No. Okay. Thank you. Uh, hi, I was just wondering uh, why is GSO uh, so much faster than non offloading uh, in lower frequencies than higher? Like in 1.5 gigahertz, it was twice as fast, but on 2 gigahertz, it wasn't th that fast. Do you have uh, any because idea? The, um, uh, because the bottleneck, in, uh, for example, uh, two, at 2 gigahertz, the bottleneck is the, is the link, is the 10 gigabit link. Uh, yeah. Is, uh, the link is saturated. Ah, yeah, okay, thanks. Uh, these tests, what uh, MTU was used on the network there? Uh, uh, 1,500. Uh, 1, okay. Any other questions? Let's thank our speaker then. Thank you.